people. Thank you for tuning in with us here at the Cornerstone Borneo. We trust that you're going to have such a great service with us. And so if you're ready to praise the Lord, why don't you get up on your feet and let's roll. Good morning, church. Thank you for tuning with us this morning. Come on, let's just worship the Lord together. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, sing with me, God above. God above, all the world in motion. God above, all my hopes and fears. I don't care what the world throws at me now. Come on, it's gonna be alright. sound of the generation making loud that freedom song all in know that the world would know your name it's gonna be your
cross, we thank you, Lord, that you sent your son to die, that we may receive salvation. Thank you. 
serve a powerful king. You are great and mighty. Let us carry a victory. Come on, church, we're going to declare this together over our lives, over our nation, over our city, over our family, whatever situation you're in. Come on, just lift up your voice. Release the truth of God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, let's lift up our voice all across the room. Come on, we sing. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Jesus has given me.
so, so good. You're such a good father, such a good king. Your mercies are new every morning, and we'll see your goodness in the land of the living. While I'm still alive, I can see your goodness, I can see your faithfulness. thank you for your presence right now we thank you God that you inhabit the praises of your people for 2,000 years you've never changed and even before that you've never changed not even a single thing you've always been faithful Lord so Father this morning we just invite you come and have your way Lord even right now touch the hearts of those who thirst for you desperate for you oh God so come and have your way Lord come and have your way right now hallelujah wherever you're at right now come on just lift up a song of surrender to the Lord just open up your heart to him we invite you here Jesus come and have your way come and have your way Marana Mashanda Rayanda Rabasuro de Kiriana Rabarana Ramasoro to Rabasha Karabayanda Rabasuna Rabarana. Come on, just lift up your voice, lift up your heart to the Lord. Oh, we come at the feet of the cross. Oh, you are going to stone. Yes, you are. Yes, Jesus, the center of our life. Center of my life. Yes, Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, that this church will be marked, Lord, for praises to you. This church will be marked because of our worship to you, Lord, not just corporately, but individually, Lord. So, Holy Spirit, we thank you, God, for dwelling within us, God. That more than just a visitation, you want to dwell within us. So, Father, we thank you, God. I pray, Father, that you dwell. And Lord, let our hearts be a place of habitation for you. Even in our praises right now, God, I pray, Father, for breakthroughs, for healings and miracles. We know there's more, God, and we ask for more. And Lord, let it be less of us and more of you, God. So Father, this morning, come and have your way, Lord. And we surrender our hearts to you. We surrender our hearts to you, Jesus. Let it be such an open space for you to take over. Thank you, Father. So, Father, even as we're going to hear your word, I pray for your anointing right now. Just increase more and more. So real, so tangible. Wherever we're at, be in a cafe or gym or in our bedroom or in the car. God, I pray right now, just invade our space. We allow you, Holy Spirit. So come and have your way, Lord. Come and have your way. We thank you for this moment. For all glory be unto you and you alone. In all the earth, we know who you are. And then we confess that you are God. Thank you, Father. We give thanks and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. 
You are in for a treat today. We have Pastor Dian Botha from Cornerstone, Singapore. He's not a stranger to us. He is a dear family, a dear brother to all of us here at the Cornerstone Borneo. And Pastor Dian has been very instrumental in a lot of our lives. And Sharon Wong, who is now back in Bangkok, Thailand, she wrote to us and she said, please send this and forward my message to Pastor Dian because he prophesied over my life that my extended family members who are Thai people, they will be saved. They, they will get to know Jesus and they will be saved. And uh, just a few days ago, um, uh, under some circumstances, she brought uh, her extended family to the church she's uh, attending in Bangkok, Thailand, and they received Jesus into their hearts. And she was just elated and ecstatic. And so it is a joy and an honor to welcome Pastor Dian to bring us the Word of God this morning. Hi, everyone. Uh... Church in Borneo, uh, Cornerstone Borneo, it's uh, wonderful for me. It's a wonderful privilege for me to speak to you again. And uh, yeah, I, I really feel I, I have a prophetic message, you know. I, I want to speak to you about Mulan in the Bible. And I'm sure you all know the story of, of Mulan. It's this um, young Chinese girl who her father couldn't go and fight in the war. And then she disguised as a man and she went to fight uh, in this war. And then, uh, yeah, to bring her family uh, honor, uh, etc., etc., because her father didn't have a son, so she had to disguise as a boy. And so, so that's the, the myth, but actually, it's a true story about Hua Mulan. So, I just I, I watched this twice, you know, and I, I really felt that, that God spoke to me that there's a prophetic message in there. First of all, it's for the women in our churches that the women should rise up, you know, and that men should stop holding the woman back, you know. Uh, um, and then I also felt that that soul that Mulan had, you know, there was, there was a few uh, 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 Chinese characters um, on the sword. And I, I want to speak about all of those. I also, so I feel that the Lord is calling us in this, in this day and age to, to war. The Lord is actually calling His church to war. And He's calling us to be faithful. He's calling us to be brave. And He's calling us to stick to the truth, right? And then, of course, the last one is... is, is uh, Filial piety, you know, that the Lord is calling His church to be filial and to look after our parents, whether physical or spiritual, you know. And uh, yeah, so, so, so let's just jump right in. Uh, I want us to look at a scripture in Psalm, uh, Psalm 68 verse 11. And it says this, I'll read from the, um, the, the Passion Translation. It says, God Almighty declares the word of the gospel with power and the warring women of Zion deliver its message. Now, I, I just thought that was so wonderful. The warring woman of Zion delivers its message. I just think that's absolutely awesome. You know, so, so uh, uh, of course, uh, something we have to realize is that some of the other translations don't say this, you know, and because the Bible was also translated by people who had biased, right? So, for instance, the King James Bible was translated in 1611, right? And so, so the, the men who lived in those, in, in those days uh, in England, they had a certain bias against women, that there's certain things women could do and certain things women could not do. So I, I, would, I want to give you uh, just some examples from the Bible, how a cultural bias, uh, it, it puts on certain glasses for us. And so when we look at the Bible, when we read the Bible, we read it in a certain way, we interpret it in a certain way. So for instance, when it speaks about Gideon, uh, in the book of Judges, when the angel appeared to Gideon, he said to him, mighty man of valor. And the, the Hebrew word there is chayil, right? But it uses the same word in Proverbs of the woman of virtue, but it calls her a woman of virtue, right? Because a woman couldn't, couldn't be a mighty woman of valor in battle because that, that, that word has got to do with war, right? So, so just because of that, they, they, they had to just give it another, another name and just rather call it virtue than valor, Right? Uh, um, because valor was too warlike, but it's the exact same word. I'll give you another example. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, Paul said to Timothy, he says, Entrust these things to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. But the, the original, I remember because I had an English-Chinese parallel Bible, and then I would read the, the, the English, it says faithful men, but the Chinese says, Chong Xin De Ren. You know, faithful people. You know, and I looked up the word in Greek. It's anthropos. Anthropos means man. It means human being, right? Humans. It doesn't mean male or female, right? So again, because of cultural bias, we interpret it in a certain way, uh, you know. But I, 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 I 
pray that today, even in the sermon, I can dispel some things in your mind and I can help you to get some understanding and perspective, especially for women. You know, I, 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 I so the, the, the two things that, 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 um, that really shocked me. All right. So I want to show you, I'm sure you've all seen, there's a picture of my, um, my great grandmother. Her name was Johanna Magdalena. Uh, Birma, right? This is my great, great, uh, great grandmother. And she came from Germany in 1871 and to be a medical doctor in South Africa, established clinics and, 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 and stuff. And, uh, you know, and uh, so it is interesting that in our family, we never had the thought of women shouldn't be educated or girls shouldn't be educated. It was, it was never part of our psyche. It was never part of our mind, right? It's like girls are as important as boys, right? But, the, now, but now in the Chinese culture, we have this thing, uh, right? which means boys are more important, you know? And, and that, is, that is very, very bad. So I, I just, now, I love Chinese culture. I think the Chinese culture is one of the, it's, it's like a superior culture in many, many ways, the characters, etc., etc. But there's some of these things that we really, really need to get rid of. Now, let me, let me just uh, um, give you two instances in my own life where I encountered this, right? So the, the of course, many, many more, but I, I just want to give you two examples. For instance, right, uh, when I was in Taiwan, we, well, one of the, the young girls in the church, uh, her father was from China, from the uh, Kuomintang, and he married a Taiwanese woman, and he, he didn't want a, a girl. He wanted a boy, so he gave her a man's name. So when we go, went on church camp, of course, the singles is one list, you know, and they would put her with the boys, with the, with the men, because she had a man's name when you looked at it. You know, like in Chinese, you can see the girl, say her name is uh, 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 um, Hui Fen, whatever you can see, it's, it's female, right? Uh, but, but she had a man's name, right? And then, of, of course, we always had to go and say, oh, no, 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 she's a girl, she needs to go with the girls, right? And when, before her mother died, her mother called her into the room, you know, and um, her mother said to her this, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say it in Chinese, you know, her mama, mother said to uh, uh, right? So basically what happened is her sister was born, they put the sister outside and the sister died in the cold. And then she's like shocked, you know. And then she said, not one, you know, said, right? So they also put the little, for her outside in the cold, but she didn't die. Right? And she was devastated. Of course, I told her that just shows you how much Jesus loves you and he had a plan for your life and he kept you, he kept you alive. Right? She, was, she had a beautiful, beautiful voice. Right? And so I was so shocked. You know, I, I, just, I could not comprehend that there could be such a thing. You know, you know? And then, uh, um, then my, own, my own family, my, my wife, Evelyn, you know, she's uh, Singaporean. You know, and uh, uh, um, when, when she was uh, young, when she, she went to study art and uh, she was already enrolled in a course and she was going and then she had to stop and go and work to make money to help her little brother to pay his tuition because he was too lazy to study, right? And he wasn't doing well in school, right? So she had to stop her uh, uh, studies and go and work so her little brother can be supported because he needed tuition, because he wasn't very studious. You know, I, I'm just thinking of my own family my parents would have told me, my sister, you just go rot in your little corner. There is no way, right, that such a thing would happen, you know. And uh, so, I mean, I saw because of my great-grandmother, all my, my cousins, uh, the, the girls now, the girls side, very, very well educated. You know, there's some u university professors. One was, uh, I don't know if you know, but the, one of the first, heart tra the first heart transplant in the world was actually uh, done in South Africa. And my one cousin was part of that, that, uh, that uh, theater team. You know, so, so anyway, I, I, I just, I, I want to encourage all the women today. I want to say to you, I really believe this is, a, a, this is a prophetic message for you to rise up and shake off any shackle, anything that tells you you are less than uh, a man. Now, of course, I'm also not promoting that women should be like men and men should be like women and all that kind of nonsense, right? I believe men should be tough, they should be strong, and I believe women should be strong. And, and uh, so, I, so I have no problem with strong women. I mean, I remember my grandmother would ride horse and she would shoot from horseback. While the horse is galloping, my grandmother would shoot from horseback. So I come from a very tough family. The women are tough, the men are tough, right? So, so um, but I, I just, when I, when I watched that, I, I just felt, you know, that girls should not be held back, you know? And uh, yeah, so, so that's what I want to talk to you about. So let's go to one of the scriptures that I used many times to, to stop women from ministry or, 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 you know, just keep women silent. You know, it's in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse, uh, verse, um, verse 11 to verse 13. It says, let a woman learn in silence with all submission. 
uh, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. Right? And so, um, now, whenever you look at any scripture, whenever you look at anything, ask yourself a question. Is this a universal principle all through the Bible? Like, remember what Paul said at, uh, on the beach when he uh, was saying goodbye to the, uh, the elders from Ephesus? He said, I did not hold back from declaring to you the whole counsel of God, the whole counsel of God, right? Now, so I'm asking you right now, is there, are there instances in the Bible where women speak? Are there instances in the Bible where women, under God's direction, leading? Yes, absolutely. Many times, right? You, you have, uh, Deborah was a judge. She actually led them. She led the, them into a military campaign, right? Then you have uh, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Remember the, 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 the older sister? She was also part of that team, right? That was leading Israel, right? And uh, then you have ma uh, many kinds of prophetesses in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we have um, Priscilla and Aquila, right? Now, now, just to show you how important this lady is, her name was mentioned before a, a husband's name. So in the Greek a context, when a name is, is, is mentioned first, it means that person is the leader. So it used to speak of Barnabas and Saul, right? And then it changed to Paul and Barnabas because Paul was taking the leadership, right? And so it says a Priscilla and Aquila, right? And so uh, Peter, which is the, the, the main apostle, we know he was married. We don't even know what his wife's name was at all. We had no, had no idea. The Bible didn't think it's important enough to mention Peter's wife's name, but Priscilla's name is mentioned. And then Paul also called her, uh, them, I mean the couple, my fellow workers, and greet the church that is in their home. Anyway, okay, so, so let's do a good biblical exegesis. I want to I wanna just help you and, and say that we must do a good biblical exegesis. Now, listen to me. Any scripture taken out of context is a context. Okay, you get that? Any scripture taken out of context is a context. Okay, so let's look at this. So the, 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 the first context that we have to look is, who, uh, who did Paul write this? Paul wrote this to Timothy. Timothy was in Ephesus. Now, Ephesus had a, the massive temple of Diana of the Ephesians. And um, they used to have temple prostitutes coming out of the temple at night and, and, and uh, coming down. And they also braided their hair. They would wear gold. That's why Paul sa said in Timothy, women, that, you know, their adornment should not be with braided hair and just the gold. What Paul was saying to them, do not ape these Women, these temple prostitutes, that's what he was saying. He wasn't saying women shouldn't uh, dress nicely and wear makeup, etc., etc., right? So you have to look at the context, right? And there was a very kind of a, a Jezebel kind of a spirit and, and, and uh, uh, women uh, uh, seducing men, etc., etc., in that context. And so Paul was speaking into that particular context, okay? So that's number one. Number two, the word authority. I do not, uh, of course, he said women should learn, which is also... Women, nobody else said that, but Paul said, no, 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 they should learn, they should study, you know, educate them, right? And uh, uh, he said, but he said, women should not have authority. So the word authority here is not the normal word for authority we have in the Bible. Like where the Bible says, as many as received them, to them is given the authority to become children of God. The word is exousia, which means executive authority, right? Like executive authority. That's the word. The word here is authentine, right? Authentine. That means to be like a self-appointed dictator. So basically what it means is to thump your husband down, right? It, 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 to, to thump him down, right? To lord it over. Now listen to me. Even men are not allowed to lord it over other people. The Bible said clearly for us, Paul said to the shepherds, do not lord it over the flock. We, none of us in the church is allowed to lord it over other people. No, it's not allowed, whether you're male or female, right? And um, so that was what, what Paul addressing. He was addressing this particular... And, only in this instance is this word used in the New Testament. Only once. Only here. Right? It's not used anywhere else. Right? So, do, so that immediately tells us this is not the norm. This is not the norm. Right? Right. The next th thing is that I do not allow a woman, a man. Both of those are in the singular. So if it was a universal principle, it will be I do not allow women to have authority over men doesn't say that. He says, a woman, a man, right? That's very important, right? And so, I mean, I, I read different translations, and I, I read uh, the Af Afrikaans Bible, which is like uh, Dutch. Same thing. It's in the singular, right? Then the next thing is that we have to understand the word for woman, a wife, in Greek, gune, and the word for, for men, aner, for, for man and husband, is the same word. 
So I can say, oh, that's my man. It's the same word as that's my husband. Exact same word. Oh, that's my woman. That's my wife. Same word. Same word. So rightfully, this passage can be translated as, I do not allow a wife to thump down her husband. Right? Now, neither do we allow husbands to thump down their wives. Right? Um, and then the next thing, the context again, context is he speaks about Adam and Eve, the context of marriage. Marriage, right? He's not talking universally. It's the context of marriage, right? He says, let the husband lead in the marriage, right? And, and, and let's have biblical order in the family, right? And so, so you see, once you have a proper exegesis of a passage, you say, oh, wow. It's, that, it's not saying at all what people made us believe it's saying or what some people say it was saying. Okay, so enough of that. So let's go to the first one. I want us to look at the first character that was on Mulan's sword. It's faithful. Right, it's faithful. So I, I, I just felt that there's a fresh call from heaven to call his believers, you and me, to call us to faithfulness. God is calling us to faithfulness. Right? God is, God is calling us to faithfulness. So I, I want us to, 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 to look, especially in these last days where, where uh, you know, uh, we have a cancel culture, we have all kinds of things like uh, uh, we need to be faithful to him and to his word. So let's, I just want us to look at a few scriptures. Okay, we're going to look at... Um, at Luke chapter 16, right? It says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. He who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Right? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give to you what is your own? So basically, three things here. You know, the Bible calls us to faithfulness, right? It says in little things, Right? If you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in big things. So l let me say this to you. Don't despise the little things that God's calling you to do. You know, when God says, go and talk to that person, when God said, give a, bit, a little bit of money to this person, when the Lord said, I want you to get up earlier, I want you to read through your whole Bible, I want whatever. It's important, okay? There's no small commandment from the Lord. Whatever the Lord says to us is a commandment. It's never suggest God never suggests to us. Like he said, forgive, forgive. Some of you need to forgive. Forgive, right? It's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. So when we're faithful with the little things that He asks us, the little tasks that He gives us, right? He will appoint us too much. He will appoint us too much. The next thing is money. He says, if you're not being faithful with unrighteous mammon, who's going to give to you true riches, right? So, so I, I, I want to I encourage you that God looks how we spend our money. And let me just say this. I mean, recently in church, we, we've had in our, our premarital counseling, we've had some couples who brought up the whole tithing thing, you know, because you've got to talk about money when you talk about marriage. And some of them said, oh, well, isn't it under the law? Let me say this to you unequivocally, once and for all, tithing has got absolutely nothing to do with the law. For the, two things. Firstly, it is covenant. It's covenant between, between heaven and earth. Abraham gave 10%. To Melchizedek, and they, 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 they brought out the bread and the wine communion, and they, they, they had a covenant, and Abraham gave him 10%, because Melchizedek was priest of God Most High, right? It's covenant. It's not law. It's not legalism. It's covenant between heaven and earth, right? Number two, it is biblical economics. That's what it is. It's tax. We all pay tax so that the, the, the roads can be built, and that the schools can function, and that society can function. So it is like a biblical tax that the, the kingdom of God can function, can function. It's biblical economics, okay? It's got nothing to do with the law, right? So, and if we don't tithe, we steal. It's like tax evasion, okay? It's like tax evasion, right? And then the, 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 the last one says we must be faithful with what is another man's. You know, sometimes, many times, God let us serve first, serve someone else, right? It says of Elisha, he poured water on the hands of Elijah. Right? So we need to learn to serve other people. We need to learn to lay down our lives for others and serve others. If you're not prepared to serve another man's vision or another woman's vision, God will not give you your own. I'm absolutely convinced of that. Right? And so you should serve that as if it is yours. Like if people ask me, Cornerstone is my church. I don't work at Cornerstone. It's my home. It's my, like people come, I make them tea or coffee sometimes. I see like some rubbish lying around or paper. I, I will pick it up. Why? It's my home. It's not Pastor Young's home. It is my home. Right? Right? So, so I really want to encourage you. We need to be faithful with the things in the kingdom. We need to steward them well. Right? And so that was the first character on uh, Mulan's sword. Right? So let's, let's go to the next one. 
Oh, I just want to show you one scripture. I thought this was incredible. For those of you who desire to be in ministry, uh, in 1 Timothy 1 verse 12, it says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me, look at this, because He counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. He counted me faithful, putting me. So you see, God, God was testing Paul from the day he got saved, right? God was testing him. He, he said, do this, do this, do this, do this. And, and Paul was absolutely faithful to whatever God wanted him to do. And then in Acts chapter 13, he says, now set apart Paul and Barnabas for the work. He was released into his apostolic ministry, that which God had for him. Why? Because he was faithful from day one. He was faithful. He said, who are you, Lord? What do you want me to do, Lord? All right? Okay, let's go to the next one. The next one is, is brave. Okay, sorry, the, 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 uh, the faithful is, is Zhongxin, okay? Zhongxin de Zhong, okay? And the next one is Yong, Yong Gan de Yong, right? Brave, brave, okay? I, I just want to encourage you to be brave. I, I, I just, I just, I just want to encourage you. There, there, there's, there's very few things that are as beautiful as somebody who is brave, right? Especially in this day and age when, when the world wants to squash you down, when the world wants to silence you. So let me, let me share this with you. Some, some weeks ago, uh, we had a meeting uh, on Zoom. I mean, the, some of the pastors here in Singapore, we, we prayed together on Fridays. And, uh, and suddenly I had this vision as we were praying. I just saw this as like a scroll and a, and a quill. You know, a quill is that feather that they used to write with. A golden scroll and a golden quill. And then I heard, I heard Martin Luther, you know. And suddenly, I mean, of course, I know the history. I, I just, it just came to me. And I felt the Lord says, publish the truth. Now, think about this. For 1,000 years, from 580 to 1,580, the, the Europeans, there was absolutely no advancement whatsoever. It's called the Dark Ages. A thousand years, the white people were in superstition and in total disarray. Do you know that in Angkor Wat in Cambodia, they had a better sewer system at the same time than they had in Paris, in France? I'm telling you, right? The, 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 the Europeans were in absolute disarray. Living in squalor, killing each, hacking each other, right? Barbarians, right? What happened? A monk, Martin Luther, read the Bible. And he says, the, uh, 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 he read, the just shall live by faith. He, gave, he, he got born again, right? He translated the Bible into German, right? And what he did, he, 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 from reading the Bible, he saw there were 95 things in the, in the, in the Catholic Church that was not, non, was not scriptural. Right? And he went to Wittenberg in 1517. He nailed it on, on those, there's a big wooden door at the church there. He nailed these 95 things there where they were violating scripture. And you know what happened? The whole of Europe changed. The German people changed. 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 Why? Because people were brave enough to publish the truth. So I, I, I want to encourage you, right? Be brave. Be brave for Jesus. Now, let's look at some scriptures. Um, in Mark chapter 8, it says, Moreover, uh, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with his holy angels. Don't be ashamed of him. Don't be ashamed. Publish his name. Publish, publish, publish. Don't be ashamed. Like Paul says in, 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 in Romans, we are not ashamed of the gospel of God for it's the power of salvation to everyone who believes, right? And let me show you another scripture in, um, in Revelation. Right, Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. It says, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderous, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The one that's mentioned first is cowards. Isn't that interesting? So let me just say this to you. Cowards go to hell. Very simple. Now, maybe you don't like it. Maybe it doesn't sound nice to you. But heaven do not like Cowards. If they put them with the idolatrous, with the immoral, right? Right? So I just want to say to you, be brave. And of course, we know the story of Simon Peter, right? In our flesh, we're weak. Okay? But we ask Holy Spirit because it says the, the wicked flees when no one pursues, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. So the Holy Spirit will make us bold. So I'm not saying we must be bold in ourselves, okay? When I was in the military, we used to say this uh, any soldier with no fear is an idiot. Any soldier who let the fear control him is a coward, right? So we don't let fear control us. So we don't say it's not there. We ask Holy Spirit to help us to be brave. So I want to encourage you to be brave. Preach the gospel. Be brave. Be brave, okay? Of course, be wise, be loving, all of those things, right? So God is calling us to be a brave, to be a brave people, especially in this day and age. The next one is ten, ten leader, ten, like truth, 
truth, right? Let me say to you, only the truth will set people free. You can sigh young people until Jesus comes back, all right? It's the truth that sets people free. Uh, we all know this in John chapter 8, right? It says, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So I, I want to encourage you again. That's why we must publish the truth. That's why we must stand up for the truth. Now remember, only I, I don't know if you've seen the, the movie Mulan. If you haven't, please watch it. It's, it's a wonderful movie, right? And, and only when she was true to herself, only when she stopped hiding away, right? Like many Christians, we, we're kind of hiding. People don't really know who we are. And they can all see that our chi is, <laughs> is quite amazing, but they don't really know who we are. Only once she stopped all of that, right, and she was be who she really was, she could really manifest her power and her strength. I, I just felt there's such a prophetic message for the church. We must stop hiding. Stop hiding. Be ourselves. Be ourselves, right, and manifest God's glory and God's grace upon the earth because that's what he called us to do, right? Walk in the truth. Walk in the truth. Walk in the truth, right? And then uh, we, we know that of Jesus, he said, you know, the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus is grace and Jesus is truth, right? Whenever you just take away one, if, if you just, some people are, uh, are proclaim truth like Pharisees, it's no longer Jesus. If it's just grace, there's no truth, it's like whatever, anything goes, that's also not Jesus. You need both. It's like the two tracks of a train track, right? You need both. It's grace and it is truth. So let's be bold. Let's walk in the truth, God's calling us to the truth, right? All right. And um, so the next one is uh, filial piety, right? The next one is filial piety. Xiao uh, Sun, the Sun. Xiao, uh, 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 sorry. Xiao Sun, the Xiao, right? Filial piety, right? And so let's look at Ephesians chapter 6. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Right. So I, I, I just felt like, you know, it, it is like in the military, you, you honor those who've gone before you. You honor veterans. You honor them. You don't let them go and live in the park. No, you give them medals and you look after them. And if, if they're still of war wounds or whatever, you give them pension. You look after them, right? And so in the same way, our parents, like, so let me just say this, whether your parents know Jesus or not, is irrelevant. It is irrelevant. It is irrelevant. Love them. Love them. Forgive them. It's a wonderful story with my wife. You know, when we got married, our father wasn't even invited. I mean, they did kind of disown him and he divorced the mom. And, but slowly, slowly, they started forgiving him and we prayed for him. And we started giving him ang pao, etc., etc. And uh, I prayed the sinner's prayer with him. And he, he had a visions of Jesus and he died and he went to heaven when he was 84. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. And she was reconciled with her dad, right? She was sitting next to him, stroking his arm. It was so beautiful to see, right? So I just want to say to you, we need to honor our parents. We need to honor those who've gone before us, right? It's just very, very important. It's very much on God's heart. So I want to pray for you today. I want to pray especially for all the ladies, right? I want to pray for you. I want to say to you, especially in Cornerstone, we have no glass ceiling. We do, there's no cap. There is no cap holding you back. And, you, and maybe in your family. I mean, we have it in Cornerstone. We have families who have businesses and they prefer the son, even though the sister. I would rather give it to the sister, right? We still have this stuff going on. But I want to say to you, in the name of Jesus, that's, there's no ceiling for you, right? There's, no, there's neither male nor female. There's neither slave nor free. We're all one in Christ Jesus. So I want to pray for you today. And, and I want to just speak grace over you and, and, and strength over you. Father, I just thank you for your bride. I, I thank you for all my sisters. And today I specifically want to pray over them. Lord, I want to repent on behalf of the male species, Lord, that we have thumped them down. Lord, that we have looked down upon them because they were not boys and they were girls, Lord God. I want to ask for forgiveness today for every nasty word that have been ever said by any father to any of them, oh God. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, where we've not told them that they're princesses. Lord, that we've not loved them as we should have loved them. Lord God, where we've made them understand their brothers are more important to them. Lord, forgive us. I pray today. I break whatever is over them in the name of Jesus and I release them, Lord. I pray for such a, a missionary anointing upon them, a warrior spirit, Lord God. Lord, these warring women of Zion, Lord, that they would go forth and change the world, Lord. Lord, I bless my sisters, Lord. I thank you for them, Lord God. I, I, I just love them, Lord. I thank you for them, Lord. Bless them and be with them. And I pray for all the men. I pray for the men in the church that they would rise up and give women their proper place, Lord, that they will not tolerate any sexism, Lord God, in your house, Lord God. 
Thank you, Lord God. Bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It was wonderful being with you, Cornerstone Borneo. Uh, good to see you. I hope I can see you face to face soon. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, Pastor Dion, for the wonderful word. Now let's approach the Lord's table this morning as we come before Him in Holy Communion. And let's just take some time to quieten down our hearts and just allow the presence of God to envelop over us. And as we come into communion with Him this morning, let's take it in reverence and in awe of the finished work of the cross. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for the bread and the cup. We thank you for the broken body of Jesus that has been broken and had been beaten for the healing of every physical body, of every mental health and of every emotional health. And I thank you that you call us unto salvation. You've called us unto wholeness. And this morning, God, we come into alignment with you, spirit, soul, and body. And we pray that as we take off the bread and we drink of the cup that represents your blood that was shed for the redemption, the forgiveness, and the healing of all who would come into fellowship and into communion with you. Lord, I pray that you will cause such an alignment, Lord, of our walk with you to come. I pray, God, that we will walk rightly before the Lamb of God, that as we come into oneness with you, Father, I pray, will you reflect Jesus in and through our lives. May we be reflectors of your image. May we be reflectors of your glory. And so, Lord, we come before you today reverently and in awe of the finished work on the cross because now you call us your righteousness and that you've called us to boldly approach the throne of grace, that there is now no shame and condemnation in your name and in your presence. We pray that you'll cleanse us we pray that you'll forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And we pray that as we take of this communion this morning, Lord, bring us into a deeper revelation of the cross and of you, Jesus. And all of this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take of the bread together. Let's take up the cup together. Amen. Amen. Lord, you said that as, as often as we eat this bread and we drink of this cup, we do it in remembrance of you, of what you have done for us on the cross. We remember your death and we also remember your resurrection. And this morning I pray and I release your resurrection life your resurrection power, God, your divine healing and restoration, God, upon the congregations, upon Cornerstone Mary and upon Cornerstone Kuching and upon everyone who's watching this right now, Lord, we speak your wholeness and your rest and your peace, the shalom peace of God to be upon your people. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you His peace. And now I pray the blessings of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and abide in you now until forevermore. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen and Amen. Now stay with us for a few more moments. I'm going to roll the announcements for today. First up, if you haven't yet followed us on social media, do check us out, like us, follow us, and be updated on what's happening here at the Cornerstone Borneo. You can find us on our Facebook, our Instagram, and also on our YouTube channel, and on our website at www.myycscc.com. Now, as the Lord has so generously blessed us, let's also be cheerful givers unto the Lord's house this morning. Just scan on the QR code below or click on the link and it will take you to our church bank account details. As the Lord has blessed us, let's give cheerfully unto the Lord. Amen. Now, FaithWorks Bookstore is having a year-end sale. We're having a 30% store-wide discount on all our items, on all books, Bibles, and merchandises. 
Now, the bookstore will be open tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday. That's the 7th, 8th and 9th of December. The operating hours will be from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. on those three dates. So hop on by. Christmas is around the corner. Get some great gifts for your family, your relatives, your friends and your loved ones or even for yourself. Let's grow in reading. Amen. Let's grow in reading. We'll also be having coffee, all right, selling coffee. So hop on by to the Faith Works and we'll see you there for some good time, hangout and fellowship. Now, we will not be accepting cards, so no card payment. Um, the only two forms of payment will be either by cash or by a bank transfer. All right, so hop on by Faith Works and we'll see you there. Last announcement, if you're looking to connect with us, um, do Scan the QR code below or click on the link, fill out the Google form and one of us here at the Cornerstone will get in touch with you. If you need a prayer for healing, you need counselling or you just want to get to know Christianity a little bit more, we'll love to get in touch with you. So do that and we will connect. Have a wonderful Sunday ahead and God bless you. We will see you next weekend.